Boba Fett Origins. Everything you need to know about this armoured bounty hunter. While we are familiar with Boba Fett's character in his iconic armour, there's a lot more to his story arc than just being a bounty hunter. He first appeared in the Star Wars franchise in 1978, and he was even known by the codename Alpha in his initial appearances. After being raised by Jango Fett, Boba went on to fight in the Clone Wars and eventually became a bounty hunter. He later played an essential role in the Galactic Civil War and recently appeared in the Mandalorian television series. Today, we will explore explore Boba Fett's entire story arc and tell you all about this mighty bounty hunter in the Star Wars universe. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. Who is Boba Fett, and why is he so important in the Star Wars universe? Boba Fett was created as part of a clone army modelled after the Mandalorian bounty hunter Jango Fett, and Boba even received his training under Jango's eyes. After Jango's death at the hands of Mace Windu, Boba set out to fight in the Clone Wars and avenge his father's death. Boba went on to become one of the most terrifying bounty hunters in the galaxy, and even established himself as a crime lord. Across his story arc, Boba Fett fought in several wars, such as the Clone Wars, Galactic Civil War, and the War of the Bounty Hunters. And he also made many allies ranging from Asajj Ventress, Bosk, Cad Bane, and even Jabba the Hutt. He also played a vital role in the Mandalorian live-action series, and Boba Fett is notably known for his striking armour and mysterious origins. He also has a standalone television series titled The Book of Boba Fett, wherein he establishes himself as a crime lord ruling over Jabba the Hutt's territory. Let us look at his origins, overall story arc, and appearances across the Star Wars franchise. Franchise. Exploring the early life and backstory of Boba Fett. After the Battle of Naboo, Jedi Master Sifo Dyas secretly commissioned a clone army on Kamino as he felt that the Galactic Republic needed more clones to defend themselves. However, Sifu Dyas was unaware that the Sith Lord Darth Tyrannus had already recruited a Mandalorian bounty hunter named Jango Fett to create this army. It so happened that the clone army was an elaborate Sith scheme to destroy the Jedi Order and Jango Fett was the genetic template upon which the clone army was created. While Jango Fett agreed to be the template, he had one condition that they should create one clone that did not have the same genetic modifications as him. The team of Kaminoan scientists created one such clone that went by the code name Alpha, and Jango then started seeing Alpha as his son. He later began calling him Boba Fett, and even Boba looked up to Jango as his father. Jango raised Boba in Topoka City, and sometimes allowed him to accompany him on his missions. Boba even received martial arts and clone trooper training under his father's watchful eye, and he soon learned how to use the weapons on his father's ship, Slave One. Django finally decided to take Boba on a mission to capture a female Twi'lek and bring her back to her father, and they were also accompanied by other bounty hunters such as Nilda, Rin, and Teaver. They finally found the young woman with her lover, Griff, and Django managed to capture her. While escaping, the Twi'lek woman almost fell off a balcony, and Django saved her life, while Boba wondered how his father knew she would jump off the balcony. Django taught Boba to always trust his instinct and also to be aware of the fact that desperate people make bad decisions. Decisions. While they delivered the girl to her father, two bounty hunters named Rin and Teaver betrayed Django and even attacked Boba, but they were eventually defeated. As they returned, Django was sure that Boba would go on to create a great legacy for himself. Boba Fett watched his father be killed before his eyes. When the galaxy was on the brink of the Clone Wars, Jango was sent on a mission to kill Senator Padme Amidala, but his attempt was unsuccessful. Nevertheless, Obi-Wan Kenobi got wind of the fact that it was Jango and his accomplice, Zam Wessel, who had tried to kill Padme, and he travelled to Kamino to investigate the matter. Jango realised that he would have to leave with Boba in order to save their lives, and he even had a brief encounter with Kenobi before leaving with Boba on their ship. They travelled to Geonosis, but soon realised that Kenobi had tracked their location. When the Battle of Geonosis started, Boba Fett stood by his father's side as they fought alongside various separatists such as Count Doku, Newt Gunray, and so on. On the other side, Jedi Master Mace Windu had declared his arrival on Geonosis to fight the battle, and Jango tried his best to protect Boba from harm. In the middle of the fight, Boba witnessed Jango's death at the hands of Mace Windu, who beheaded him and left him to die. Jango had challenged Mace Windu to a fight, but he ended up dying while Boba witnessed the scene from a hiding place. He later came out of hiding and picked up his father's helmet swearing to go after Windu and avenge his father's death. Don't shoot! Don't worry. 
What was his role during the events of the Clone Wars? After burying his father's body, Boba collected his father's armor and a book he had left behind for him. He briefly considered returning to Kamino, but didn't feel it would be safe there without his father. Eventually, Aura Singh handed Boba Fett over to Darth Tyrannus in exchange for getting Slave One. When Boba finally got the ship back from Singh, he had to first visit Tyrannus at Raxus Prime. However, a Republic attack on Raxus Prime allowed Boba to escape the situation, and he was then captured by clone troopers and taken to an orphanage on Bespin. Aura Singh was still trying to find Boba and claim all the money that Jango had stored at a bank on Aragao, but Boba managed to escape her. He did get betrayed by a Claudite named Nuri and lost 500,000 credits, but he did receive the rest of the money. He followed his dad's advice from the book he had left behind, guiding him to visit Jabba the Hutt. On his journey, Boba ended up running into a separatist commander named Dirge and ended up clashing with him. Eventually, Boba decided to go after Mace Windu and even recruited Aura Singh and bounty hunters such as Bosk and Cass us to kill Windu. He then disguised himself as a member of the Clone Youth Brigade and sneaked into the Star Destroyer ship known as Endurance. Windu was aboard the Endurance alongside Anakin Skywalker and Boba was even made to participate in a shooting test alongside the other clone youths. He eventually snuck out, found Windu's private quarters and even planted a bomb there. However, another clone trooper got rid of the bomb and the entire ship was then put on high alert. Singh then asked Boba to destroy the whole ship, after which he sneaked into the reactor chamber with a blaster. He ended up sabotaging sabotaging the entire ship and he then rejoined the youth brigade and got off the ship in an escape pod. The other bounty hunters picked him up on Slave 1 and Boba later learned that Windu had survived the attack. He later arrived at the crash site to lay a trap for Windu and again placed a bomb inside a helmet. While the explosion caused a lot of damage at the crash site, Windu once again survived the blast, but their cruiser's bridge collapsed and the Jedi ended up being buried under a lot of rubble. However, they managed to make it out of the situation while Boba Fett returned to Slave 1. Singh had also taken some hostages during the crash and Boba did not like how she treated the prisoners. Boba showed some compassion to the hostages and even gave them water. Later Singh singled out Pons and then executed him to send a message to Windu. She had hoped that Windu would come for them after seeing this but Boba started to get uncomfortable with how easily she was killing people. The crew decided to settle on Florum where they also met Singh's former lover Hondu Onaka but the Jedi soon tracked them down. With Windu recovering from some injuries Jedi Master Plo Koon and Ahsoka Tanu travelled to Florum and Boba got quite offended as he hoped to face Windu. Eventually, Singh betrayed Boba Fett and Plo Koon easily apprehended him and even took him to Hondu Onaka. Onaka convinced Boba to speak up and tell Koon about the hostages they had captured earlier on, and Boba finally revealed the coordinates of Slave 1 where they were held captive. Ahsoka Tanu finally freed the hostages and even did a lot of damage to Slave 1, and then the ship crashed along with Aura Singh. Plo Koon and Osaka Tanu captured Boba Fett and Bosk and took them to a Republic prison on Coruscant. During this time, Boba still held bitter feelings towards Mace Windu and he was also deriving a plan to break out of prison. He teamed up with Cad Bane to start a fight against Kenobi who was also in the prison in a disguise and Boba soon used the fight as a distraction to escape. How did he become a legendary bounty hunter? In the later stages of the Clone War, Boba Fett led a team of bounty hunters including Oked, Bosk, Razi, Denger, and C-21 Highsinger. During one of their missions on Quarzite, Asajj Ventress killed Oked, and the rest of the bounty hunters then coerced Asajj into joining their team. They arrived on Quarzite and learned that they had to deliver a package to Atua Blanc, and they soon realized that the chest contained a young woman who was being forcibly married to Atua Blanc. Boba learned that the young woman was plumed Pluma Sodi, and they were even ambushed by Pluma's brother, Crismo Sodi, on their way. While Ventress quickly got rid of Crismo, she felt bad for Pluma and wanted to let her go. On the other hand, Boba wanted to finish the job and Asajj then choked Boba Fett using her force powers and even trapped him inside a chest instead of Pluma. He was delivered to Atua Blanc, but then later escaped and decided to visit Hondo Onaka and retrieve Slave One. He carried out a couple of other missions before ending up in the custody of Jabba the Hutt. It so happened that Jango had killed Gardula the Hutt years ago and Jabba was grateful to Jango for this. Boba even landed in Jabba's good books and started working for him. Jabba's crew even fitted Jango's famous armor on Boba's body and he was then sent on a mission to find Gil Ramos Lipkath and bring him to Jabba before Dirge. While Dirge did not know where to start, Boba arrived at Mos Espa after borrowing a jetpack from Jabba's chef. He ended up clashing with Dirge who also wanted to find Gil Ramos and win Jabba's favor but Boba finally located Gil Ramos's hideout. He even got his hands on Gil Ramos's hat 
to show Jabba that he did find him, but his altercation with Dirge eventually resulted in Gilramus' death while Boba managed to escape. He later travelled to the Dune Sea and assassinated Jordvar before returning to Jabba. Jabba later sent Boba on an assignment to the planet Zagobah, where the Republic and the Separatist forces were already at war. Boba struggled to find General Grievous and even had to fake his death to escape the planet. He somehow managed to escape Slave 1, but Asajj Ventress damaged his ship and Boba could only get out of the situation with some help from Jedi Knight Anakin Skywalker. He had no option but to land on a nearby moon and Skywalker helped him repair his ship. Skywalker later intended to arrest Boba for flying in a Republic controlled military zone, but Boba offered crucial information in exchange for being pardoned. He stated that he would only share this information with the Supreme Chancellor and he then used this information to get closer to Mace Windu. Boba knew Count Dooku and Darth Tyrannus were the same person, but the Supreme Chancellor Palpatine was already aware of this information. Moreover, Palpatine knew that Boba had taken his chance only to get close to Windu and even assured Boba that they shared the same enemy. Palpatine soon sent Boba away and asked him to never talk about their conversation with anyone. Around the end of the Clone Wars, Boba turned 13 and officially became an adult Mandalorian bounty hunter. In the early Imperial era, he gained quite a reputation as a bounty hunter and even married a Kifar bounty hunter named Sintus Bell around 16 BBY. They also had a child named Aelin Bell, but their relationship soon started having trouble. At one point, an officer on Concord Don forced himself upon Sintas and then Boba killed him and even ended up in jail. He was then exiled from this planet and Sintas soon divorced him. After losing his shot at a normal family, he returned as a full-fledged bounty hunter once again. Cesar Fromm later recruited him to get rid of George Dusat and Thal Jobin from the Boon to Speeder race. However, Jabba had also placed a bounty on Fromm's head and Boba decided to ignore that for the time being since Fromm had helped him in the past. Eventually, he decided that he had gone through a lot of trouble over Fromm and he then handed over his entire gang to Jabba. Did Boba Fett work for Darth Vader? He also worked for Darth Vader on multiple occasions, and he even once returned to Kamino to lead the 501st Legion against a group of clones. He later came across Han Solo on Jubilar while working on a mission for Jabba, and he felt that Solo would go on to do great things. Around 5 BBY, Boba finally captured Solo, but Solo's friend, Lando Calrissian, arrived at the scene and managed to free Solo. While they escaped, Boba Fett was determined to get his revenge, and he was often sent on missions to capture Han. Solo. After several unsuccessful attempts, Jabba started telling Boba not to kill Solo as he had become his favoured smuggler. While Boba accepted Jabba's money in exchange for not killing Solo, he decided to kill him if he ever got the chance. Around 4 BBY, Boba was even sent on a mission to capture a rebel by the name of Bria Tharon and bring her back alive. However, Boba realised it would be impossible to capture her alive and he decided to give up on this bounty. Around 3 BBY, Boba got caught up in the Sereno conspiracy, which was a mission to eliminate House Duke Dooku's influence on Sereno. Lord Bergen hired him to kidnap Duke Bron Dooku, but he eventually came across Jahan Cross, persuaded him to kill Borgen. Vader once hired Boba to capture an Imperial known as Abal Karda, and also bring back a box that Karda would carry all the time. While Fett located Karda on Marek's Minor, he was tempted to keep the box for himself. However, Vader had also followed Boba to Marek's Minor, and the two of them ended up in a fight over the box. Boba even put up a tough fight against Vader, and almost even killed him, but he later changed his mind as he didn't want to get in trouble with the Empire. Good call. After a while, Boba travelled to Dar Gully in 1 BBY, wherein Darth Vader was fighting several bounty hunters who were trying to kill him. While all the other bounty hunters had teamed up against Vader, Boba teamed up with the Dark Lord of the Sith and helped him defeat the bounty hunters. Boba's story arc over the years. Boba's missions during the early Galactic Civil War. In the early Galactic Civil War, Boba Fett was once again recruited by Darth Vader to get rid of the pirate defenses over the planet of Elam. These events occurred during the Battle of Typhera, and Boba was even cornered by the pirates when he was trying to escape with his bounty, Bria Tharon. He eventually had no option but to let Bria go, and one of the pirates named Drea even paid him 100,000 credits to free Bria. Around 1 BBY, Boba was once again hired to capture Han Solo and take him to Grand Moff Tarkin, but he was unaware that Darth Vader also wanted to get his hands on Solo. While Boba tracked Solo down on Tatooine, Vader followed him and even defeated him. Once again, Boba could not capture Solo and he was determined to find him one day. He later settled with another bounty hunter named Zasha when Darth Vader contacted him to go on a new mission. At the time, Boba was struggling with his funds and he accepted this bounty to earn more money. He was sent to find a force wielder named Starkiller and Zasha eventually abandoned Boba after realising how dangerous their mission 
Ren was. Boba visited Darth Vader, who told him that he wanted to capture a renegade clone of Starkiller and not the actual person. Vader had experimented with this clone and wanted to get it back, and Boba was unaware of the fact that Vader was using a new technology known as the Accelerated Cloning Process to create thousands of clones. Boba later even participated in the Battle of Kamino alongside Darth Vader, and he was even later allegedly killed during a mission. Boba Fett's alleged death and return to life. After Boba Fett was allegedly killed by Imperial stormtroopers, he emerged on a shuttle known as the Fallon and traveled to Iridonia. He was on a mission to track down the person who had wanted to kill him and this search led him to Captain Sibar, who guided him towards Commander Sathiman. After tracking Sathiman, Boba learned that Mac Uevs actually orchestrated the entire thing and he traveled to Concord Dawn where Uevs told him that Governor Purton was the one who wanted to kill Boba. Purton was soon killed by Freeman and Boba was soon sent on another mission by Darth Vader. He had to capture the Star Speeder 1000 ST1401 ship and take it to the Imperials, as the ship contained one rebel spy. After this mission, Boba once again worked under Jabba the Hutt's commands to find a valuable statuette known as the Yavin Basilica. Boba Fett's role in the Galactic Civil War While many bounty hunters joined the Bounty Hunters Guild, Boba decided against joining them and only worked independently. The Imperials often hired him to hunt people down and he was once even sent on a mission to infiltrate the Guild and get rid of it. After destroying the Guild, Boba even went on a couple of missions for the Empire and even took part in the Battle of Hoth. He eventually even succeeded in his mission to capture Han Solo and bring him to Jabba's base on Tatooine. Later, the Alliance to restore the Republic tried to free Han Solo and Boba tried to prevent this. However, Han Solo jammed a pole into Boba's jetpack, resulting in him falling into the great pit of Carcoon, where he encountered the omnivorous creature known as Sarlacc. The fall had detrimental effects on Boba's health and even lost his memory for a while after ending up in the grasp of the Sarlacc. However, Boba could not be defeated by just a Sarlacc and he finally made his way out of the creature's belly. Boba's story arc during the later years of the Galactic Civil War. Boba Fett was quite weakened by his ordeal and he even decided against taking up any new bounty hunting jobs. He also lost a leg and had to get a new prosthetic leg. Eventually Fett was hired by a warlord known as Enix Devian to capture Kir Kanos and bring him back. Boba located Kanos on the planet of Minka and later requested him to come with him. Kanos surrendered himself and Boba took him to the planet Orz 7611323 to hand him over to Devian. His health however kept worsening over time and his body was also vulnerable to cancer after spending days stuck inside the Sarlacc's body. Boba was even required to get that new prosthetic leg that would stop the cancer from taking over his entire body, but he didn't have the funds to indulge in extensive medical treatments. He went to Kamino to get a replacement for his prosthetic leg, where Ton Wee approached him and asked him to go on one last mission. He asked Boba to hunt Fen Shiza, but for some reason Shiza ended up dying on the planet of Shogun. While taking his last breath, Shiza made Boba promise that he would become Mandalore and look after the Mandalore and protectors. Boba's life as Mandalore. After spending most of his life as a bounty hunter, Boba Fett finally became Mandalore and even looked over the Mandalorians during the Yuzan Vong War. He helped the New Republic fight against the aliens and sometimes even worked as an assassin to get rid of any extra galactic invaders. When the Yuzan Vong had attacked Mandalore's surface, they discovered heaps of Mandalorian iron that was stored underneath the planet's surface, and this discovery further strengthened the planet's forces. Over time, Boba assisted the Mandalorians during the Second Galactic Civil War, but he could sense that his health was worsening. He contacted his granddaughter, Myrta Gev, and even accompanied her on several missions. Sometimes Han Solo also joined them on their missions, and Boba later trained Han's daughter, Jaina. Jaina wanted to get rid of her twin brother, Darth Kaidus, and Boba's training played a huge role in Jaina's success in that mission. However, Boba then got stuck in the middle of an Imperial nanovirus attack that prevented him from returning to Mandalore. Exploring his role in the original trilogy and the prequel trilogy. Boba Fett first appeared in the original trilogy in The Empire Strikes Back, where Jeremy Bullock mainly portrayed this character. In the trilogy, Boba was part of a team of bounty hunters who worked for Darth Vader. When Vader promised to reward any bounty hunter if they captured the crew on board the Millennium Falcon, Boba tracked the spaceship down while it was near Cloud City. Vader was torturing the ship's passengers while Boba Fett wanted to capture Han Solo and take him to Jabba the Hutt. Jabba had announced a bounty on Solo's head and Boba was determined to take Solo back to Jabba's palace on Tatooine. Boba eventually captured Solo and took him to Jabba on his Slave One spaceship. In the Return of the Jedi, Solo's friends sneak into Jabba's palace at Tatooine to rescue him. Boba also showed up on the scene and even cornered Princess Leia, who had disguised herself as a bounty hunter. After capturing these invaders, Boba traveled to the Great Pit of Carcoon to witness some prisoners' executions, but the prisoners came together and started a revolt. During this revolt, Boba briefly dueled Han Solo, who eventually hit Boba's jetpack and caused him to lose balance, falling into the 
great pit of Carcoon. The pit was home to a creature known as the Sarlacc, and Boba Fett fell directly into its mouth. A special edition of the film also showed a scene where Boba was seen flirting with some of Jabba's female dancers. I think they were female. In the prequel trilogy, Boba Fett's character was portrayed by Daniel Logan in Episode 2, Attack of the Clones, and in this film we get a glimpse into Boba Fett's creation and his early life with Jango Fett. Furthermore, this movie also covered the incidences of Geonosis, where Boba saw his father's death at the hands of Mace Windu, and then swore to avenge him. Boba Fett had an impactful role in the Clone Wars animated series. Boba Fett also appeared in the Clone Wars animated series which covered his story arc after his father's death. Boba had sneaked onto Mace Windu's flagship and even sabotaged the ship's engine, which caused the ship to crash on a nearby planet. Later, Boba eventually attempted to kill Windu again and took some hostages along with his crew of bounty hunters. However, eventually Aura Singh executed one of the hostages and the Jedi Order decided to send Plo Koon and Ashoka Tano to capture Boba. He was taken to prison on Coruscant but he escaped escaped prison in the show's fourth season and even formed a syndicate named Crate's Claw. This team of bounty hunters include Bosk and Dengar and they went on several missions together. On one such mission they had to deliver a cargo to a doctor and Boba eventually learned that this package was a young woman who was being coerced into marrying a dictator. While Boba decided to continue the mission, Asajj Ventress got mad at him, captured him by using the force and then delivered him to the dictator inside the package. Boba Fett also appeared in The Mandalorian. Boba Fett also appeared in The Mandalorian television series, where Tamira Morrison played the character. He was first seen in the episode titled Chapter 5, Gunslinger, wherein he only appears from within the shadows and inspects the bodies of Fennec Shand on the planet of Tatooine. Boba Fett's presence in The Mandalorian would have also confirmed that he survived after falling into the Sarlacc's mouth, and he later appeared in the show's second season. He appeared in the episode titled Episode 9, Marshall, where it was revealed that Boba Fett's armour was retrieved by Cobb Van who then used the armour to protect the people of Mos Pelgo from external threats. Eventually, the Mandalorian got his hands on this armour as he believed that the Mandalorian armour belonged to its rightful owners. While the Mandalorian takes his leave, Boba Fett watches from the shadows as the Mandalorian walks away with his armour. While these appearances were relatively brief, Boba Fett finally revealed himself in Chapter 14, The Tragedy. In this episode, Boba Fett saved Fennec's life after she was brutally injured, and he then asked for her help in retrieving his armour. The two travelled in Slave 1 and arrived on Python, where Boba explained that the armor belonged to his father, Jango Fett. The Mandalorian returned the armor to Boba in exchange for his help in taking care of Grogu, and Boba then fought against Moff Gideon's Imperial forces when they tried to capture Grogu, or Baby Yoda. While Boba Fett and the rest of them did their best, Grogu was eventually taken away by Gideon's dark troopers, and Boba then helped the Mandalorian to rescue the child. Boba Fett later appeared in another episode of the show where he clashes with Mandalore's former ruler, Bo-Katan Kryze. While the Mandalorian had recruited an entire team of a Accomplished fighters to rescue Grogu, Kreese looked down on Boba due to his origins as a clone. However, Kreese and Boba eventually worked together to rescue Grogu, and Boba later disappeared from the show after they'd completed this mission. Eventually, Boba appears in a post credit scene where he returns to Tatooine with Fennec and eventually kills Bib Fortuna. Bib had taken over Jabba's palace after his death, and Boba killed him and took his place on the throne while Fennec stayed by his side. <laughs> What makes Boba Fett so powerful? Boba Fett was one of the most skilled bounty hunters in the entire franchise, and he was also trained in numerous martial arts and other strategic skills. He once even managed to kill an entire battalion of Imperial troopers effortlessly, and his strength was limitless. He could maneuver several vehicles, such as the Slave 1, Slave 3, and Slave 4, and wielded several weapons ranging from lightsabers and rifles to pistols and flamethrowers. For the most part, Boba Fett's preferred choice of weapon was an EE3 carbine rifle. He always wore battle armour that made him nearly invincible, and he also wore a helmet that could record videos, dispense water, and even detect minute sounds in his surroundings. His helmet also had a feature that allowed him to control his weapons, jetpack, and other sensors by using his voice. It could also transfer communication transmissions, and even send fake transmissions. Boba Fett's Mandalorian armour was made out of duroplast, and he also wore a power armour liner that further protected his body from injuries. This power liner also protected him from fire, intense temperatures, and even poisons or corrosive. Yeah. <laughs>
Conclusion To sum it up, Boba Fett had quite an extensive story arc across the Star Wars franchise, and he has established himself as one of the most terrifying bounty hunters in the galaxy. He's also been part of several live action and animated series, and he has most certainly attracted the audience's attention with his stellar presence. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave us a like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone.